Welcome back, everybody. My name is Nicholas Bogroff Gansel, and I am creatively bankrupt. So today, we are diving into Season 1, Episode 4 of Police Squad, entitled Revenge and Remorse and or The Guilty Alibi. The Guilty Alibi. I like that one. That's a, that's a good title. Um, so I've been saying the last couple episodes that there's not really continuity between these episodes, and I realized that's not entirely true. When I was editing the last episode, I realized that in the, uh, the police station, in the epilogue, they keep mentioning the previous people they arrested. They keep bringing up Sally Decker from the first episode. And, uh, so there is a little bit of continuity from episode to episode. Um, but... Yeah, it's not relevant to anything, so... Revenge, remorse, guilty alibi... Yeah, I got no predictions for this episode. Oh, no, I do have one. I noticed that structurally, the first scene of every episode does not have uh, Leslie Nielsen or Alan North. It's the crime being committed. And uh, then after the cold open, that's when Leslie Nielsen comes in with his monologue. So uh, that's my prediction, is that the first scene will not have Leslie Nielsen or Alan North, and it'll just be just a bunch of strangers we don't know yet, and then a crime is committed. Um, I wish I had more to say, but... Uh, yeah, without predictions to make, you guys know what I think about this show. You know I'm enjoying it. You know that I think it's uh, it's not perfect, but it's pretty fantastic. It holds up shockingly well for being almost 40 years old. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll dive on into it. Oh, and as always, if you're watching my videos without watching the original content first... You're doing the content a disservice, and you're doing yourself a disservice. If you really do want your first experience of Police Squad to involve me, then head over to my Patreon. For just $1, you can get access to my uncut reactions that you could play alongside the original content. Let's dive in. Police, Police Squad, Squad in, in color. color. I love that. I don't think I ever noticed the guy jumping out the window before. I was so distracted by the machine guns and the dude on fire. Tonight's special guest star, William Shatner. Hey, you! Yeah, they must all be real guest stars, because that's really William Shatner. I was wondering. The guilty alibi. Dun dun da! <laughs> oh, it's only you, Ralph. How's it going? Great! <laughs> <laughs> Did not see that coming. Oh! I bet it's gonna explode when he hits the gavel down. May be seated. <laughs> yep. There'll be a five minute recess. <laughs> nice. I was having my car washed when I received an urgent call from downtown. A, a donut, Frank? Yeah, thanks. Sounds like the judge was a target. What do we got on him? Well, his name was J. Oliver Maxwell. He'd been on the bench for 25 years. With a <laughs> reputation for harsh sentences. I've got Marcus and Drake going through the record. Damn, now I'm hungry. Released prisoners. Oh, and Al, get yourself a haircut. You look ridiculous. Sorry, Captain, I was just trying something different. There we are. Well, according to this, Frank, he was a model prisoner. Vote of an M.O. fit. Yeah, well, it's as good a place as any to start. I hope you'll excuse the mess. I've been packing up a few things for charity. Uh -huh. May I take your coat, Captain? Thank you. I suppose this has something to do with Eddie? I'm afraid so. It's about the courthouse bombing, isn't it? What's in all the papers? Oh, let she me put his that. jacket oh, in the you. box. That's just her stage name. Her real name is Mimi Coffee. Coffee? No, thank you. It seemed Lana welcomed this opportunity <laughs> to pour her heart out. At first, she and Eddie had a good marriage, regular jobs, close friends, a dentist. I was wondering if she had all their clothes at this point. I'm Lieutenant Drebin. This is Captain Hawken, police squad. Is this some kind of bust? Yes, it's very impressive, but we'd just like to ask a few questions. Well, come on in. 
Thank you. We'll try not to take up too much of your time. All right, let's get moving. You're on stage in five minutes. There's a misunderstanding with police officers. Police officers? <laughs> five minutes. Two minutes, and I'm not kidding. You a policeman, too? No, I'm an ex-con. Ex-con? <laughs> two minutes. I know why you guys are here. You're trying to pin that court bombing on me. We were getting around to that. Yeah, well, we were getting around to that. So you see, Katie, fish have gills to extract oxygen from water. But cats but don't! species have lungs, which are equipped only to accept oxygen in its natural state. And that's why most mammals must live on land. Wow, that's neat. That's oh, the same right. kid from episode two, I think. Would you like to keep him, Katie? Can I? Now that you just tried to drown him. Why don't you run along now, Katie? And next week I'll show you why women can't play professional football. Okay, bye, Mr. Olsen. What? Progress, Ted. We've been sorting through the fragments left by the bombing. Classic. Doctor says that too much caffeine makes me edgy. Why don't you try some of this? It's decaffeinated coffee. Decaffeinated, huh? Well, I'll give it a try. You were right about that coffee. I sure feel better now. What the fuck? Accidents will happen. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> There's got to be a parody of a specific coffee commercial, right? Like when decaf was new? Because that was just way too specific to just be random. Uh-oh. That kind of looks like a woman's hands. I'm speculating that it's a woman wearing a man's suit. Locally, it's 68 degrees under partly cloudy skies on this beautiful morning here in the Metro. <laughs> no reports of traffic congestion. <laughs> Yeah! It's nice to know there are things you can rely on. Disperse. Please disperse. There's nothing for you to see here. Please go home. Keep moving, please. Keep <laughs> He's moving. just yelling in the face of those two people. Now, oh, there's the tow truck. What do you think, Ed? Well, my guess, Frank, is this the same sort of a bomb. The strange thing is we haven't been able to find the body. Well, it's quite an explosion. Yeah. Well, our job's done here. Yeah, we better get back to headquarters. What time is it? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I think we better have a talk with Eddie Casales. Oh my god. <laughs> that was just a perfect punctuation. I told you, I don't remember. Who had the egg salad? I don't remember. Somebody ordered it. You can't expect us to buy that. But I already paid for it. Why don't you give a guy a break? Thanks a lot. What's the charge, huh? Uh, Four fifty-eight. What are you trying to do? Insult us? Okay, three fifty. <laughs> Coffee's on me. I told you, I went to the movies. I fell asleep. I don't remember. You don't expect us to swallow that. All right, I'll eat it. I don't think it's fair that I should have to pay for it. All right, <laughs> Explain this to me. Well, you take this little cardboard stick out with uh, sulfur on the end and you rub it on the edges and it makes fire. Don't play dumb with me. Tell that bomber to take off. Oh, this is the first time we're seeing out the window. She said she wanted to see me at the club right away. Since I had no idea where the club right away was, I suggested the Club Flamingo. She agreed. <laughs> nice. May I check your coat? Thank you. Thank you. That's why there are no coats hanging up. <laughs> what? Well, what <laughs> Thank you for coming. Oh, that was stellar. Yes, I know. What will it take to put him behind bars for good? Well, we're like oh, one she's piece the one doing the special bombings. evidence. It would make an airtight case. In the meantime, Lana, we're worried about you and Mimi. 
Mimi. Now, we're prepared to offer you the same police protection. Ah, well, in the long run, that might be just as well. Now, uh, listen, Lana. In the meantime, be careful. <laughs> Lana's attitude... <laughs> it's a different receiver. <laughs> she was almost hostile toward Eddie, yet she felt no threat from him. <laughs> We're going old school on this one. Okay, boys. Run her in. I knew they had to squeeze another gag in there, but I wasn't sure how it was going to happen. Say, Captain, what do you want me to do with these files for you? <laughs> Be sure to tune in next week for another exciting Trying to pose with one of them. Of Police Squad. That dude's perpetually the third wheel. So that was episode four of Police Squad. I thought that episode was stellar. It, uh... It had a number of really funny gags. Uh, I'm thinking particularly of walking through the the restaurant and seeing the people upside down, uh, like folded away with the chairs on the table, um, as well as certain off-screen violence was very funny. The scene where the guy tripped over the phone cable. There was just they they really threw everything at the wall this episode, and uh, yeah, no, I I really dug it. Um, I feel like I was laughing out loud more this episode than usual. It, uh... Because oftentimes the jokes are very subtle, and so it's like, ah, ha, ha, I see what you did there, clever, but you're not, like, quite laughing out loud. But there were, like, multiple points where I was just full-on laughing, and... I think this is the funniest episode yet. It, uh... Up until now, I would have said the pilot was probably the funniest episode, but... I think this one, this one takes it. I don't know, it, 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 it just... The ratio of big laugh out loud gags was a lot higher than usual. It uh and but they still had the subtle stuff. So it it's not like they lost the subtle stuff in order to do the big stuff. Um Yeah, no, overall it was just a fantastic episode. I also thought it was interesting that this episode I was actually kind of invested in the uh the story. That's not something that I expected from this show. But this time around, I was like, oh, I actually, I have a theory as to who did this. And, I mean, it was fairly predictable, but it was still enough to get me engaged, which uh, hadn't really happened prior to this point. So, so yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was cool. I enjoyed that. Um, oh, the other gag that killed me was when they said they couldn't find the body after the explosion, and then the hand just dangled down from the tree, and they checked the time on the, the dead guy's watch, but still didn't notice the body. That shit was so funny. I'm realizing that... Because there's not a lot to predict in this show, mostly my afterthoughts are getting reduced to this was the gag that I thought was funny <laughs> um and my intros are getting shorter and shorter I uh I don't know what to say about that that's kind of just the nature of the beast um the good news is the show has continued to deliver laughs so I was worried I was a little I don't want to say I was worried I had a mild concern that after the first episode or two they would sort of run out of cop show tropes and the later episodes wouldn't be as funny. Because in the first episode, some of the stuff that was funny is stuff that they do in every episode, but that was the first time I was seeing it. So like the fact that every time he uh, parks his car, he runs into something. I still think it's funny, but it's not as laugh-out-loud funny as it was in the first episode. Um, and... Uh, a lot of the jokes like the cigarette, yes, I know. I love that they keep doing that, 
But again, it's not as funny as it is the first time, but it is still nice to see that they have some some running jokes that they're they're willing to keep doing. So yeah, I uh I really don't have a ton to say about this. I just thought it was a fantastic episode and I thought it was really goddamn funny. Um So come back next week and we'll check out another episode of Police Squad. And if you can't wait that long, then uh, click on the link in the description to check out my Patreon. You can get episodes up to four weeks early there. And uh, as always, please like and subscribe because I'd love to have you all coming back on the regular.